Yeah. I took that L to the chin fair and square that time. What's up kids? We're back here again to tell you a little brief history about off-roading and guess what? You can't get off-road unless you know about four-wheel parts. Back in 1961, a gentleman by the name of George Adler took a job at Transamerica Parts. Later on, George would go on and buy the company he worked for for $5,000. You know how much 5 Gs was in 1961? It's a lot of money. So in 1964, George had stumbled upon a Sears catalog notice and they sold off-road parts. So you know what that meant? He did what any red-blooded American would do and started his own catalog parts company, also known today as Four Wheel Parts. So in 1976, my man George had two storefronts, and from there, in 1980, he had five storefronts, and you could imagine he was making motion. And do you think Four Wheel Parts stopped there? No, there was an invention known as the World Wide Web, which means they could take their business storefront and move it across the world. No longer did you have to go just to one location. You can go anywhere with the touch of a button. That's right, fourwheelparts.com can get you any and everything for your vehicle. Welcome back, we're here in the dirt for another episode of This First That Off-Road. This all wouldn't be possible without the support of Four Wheel Parts. They eat, sleep, and breathe the dirt is why we are here today. That's right, so we got some sick trucks lined up for you. Let's go check those out. Hold on to your pants, because it's about to get wild. This guy right here is an internet sensation, a good friend of mine, Mr. Darren Parsons. We're here with 1477. This thing has taken 1447. shape. 1447, go ahead. <laughs> We're here with the infamous 1447, which has undergone so many transitions. How long have you owned this truck? How have these stages developed into what it is, this majestic, beautiful <laughs> Ranger? Started uh, 13 years ago this year, man. It's crazy. Bought this thing, I sold my dirt bike and pulled a $4,000 personal loan to buy the chassis. I assume you know what to do with this. Uh -huh. I didn't have know how to weld. I didn't know how to bend tube. I didn't know how to notch tube. I didn't know how to mount seats. Like it's everything, it's all new to me. 13 years later, over 20 race wins, championships, you name it, this truck's done it. And it's at its best state possible today here for this first that. This engine hasn't even been out of its first oil change yet. <laughs> Freshy. Freshy 427 from Texas Speed. Just put it in. I blew up the last motor after five years. One King of the Hammers in it. Second turn, not even a mile after winning King of the Hammers, it freaking sawed itself in half. So it's all fresh heart in this thing. It puts 424 to the rear wheels. Dry sump or wet sump? Dry sump, so that's definitely what's kept this thing alive. Keeping it OG with the Ranger suspension. This I-beam setup is a beefcake. Yeah, it's crazy. This thing's been rebuilt how many times? But I've always kept it true to form. But this time around, we went with the inch and three quarter I-beam. So we actually have Kenworth size knuckles on this thing off of a yes. semi truck. Because guess what? They're cheap, they don't break, and that's what I-beam life's all about. Controlled by King 3.0. Bypass, three five or three oh coil over, three five bypass. Yes. This thing is uh the sauce that keeps this thing living as well. And they just chop right through the whoops, paired with uh crossover steering. <laughs> Who built this beautiful setup? I know you've worked on this with, uh, I believe, Moore's Metalworks? That's right, Eric Moore, Moore's Metalworks. He's the one that I bought the chassis from. He's the one that ran me through how to fabricate, and he's the one that's built this truck. I mean, I've only ever maintained it and fixed it. <laughs> so this has been an ongoing relationship for 13 years. 13 years, yeah. Two dudes, one truck. Whoa! She got 
One big old booty back here, dude. <laughs> Having some booty was more important than drinking water, man. Their rear wheels actually bump at about a quarter way up here? the extended cab window. Yeah, we probably won't even see it today even on this course, but these rear tires come all the way up, and that's why the top's gone out of the fenders. So uh, how much travel does that create? In the rear, this truck will cycle with the Kinetic Trophy truck back half, a clean 32 inches, but we got it bumped and strapped at like 27 because okay. that's all it needs. So this is an entire rear Kibbe Tech butt, right? And it holds a 95 gallon Pyrotech fuel cell. The 240s, these things are weighing 158 pounds per KMC wheel, 40 inch KR3 BFG. So with that weight, this truck is actually 57% rear weight bias. Huge. And that's huge. In the desert, you know, you gotta get this thing sitting on the rear wheels like a dirt bike. You're leaning back to hit those whoops. <laughs> And that's why all this weight and all this capacity is here in the back of the truck. KMC Impact Forge Wheels, first ever forged wheel I've ever ran on this truck, and it's crazy. They're lighter, they're stronger, and they're beautiful, obviously. BFG 40s, you can't go wrong. The best tread wear in the game. That's about it, man. That's all it takes. You got some nice rubbers. <laughs> I'd always try to keep this thing streetable. With the rebuild, we lost that, but it's still drivable on the street. Just don't ask local law enforcement. Freedom tastes good. It does taste good, I like freedom. All the EFI dashes and displays, obviously. These things are slick, you can put your switches into them, you can program them however you'd like. It'll tell you, hi Blake, how's your morning? <laughs> How sweet. You got your race pack system up here. The PDM actually talks to the Holly system. So guess what? When you go to drive this thing, that's the only button you're pressing and it goes down the road. It turns everything on as you'd like, as you're cruising. So the ECU is basically in communications. It does all the work. That's it makes right. sure that you as a as a human can't mess up. Right. Beautiful. We got fire extinguishers because uh, as we may have seen by now, she's gotten spicy once or twice. Is this the party handle? That's it, man. You gotta have your have your hoonie handle, right? You got any strategy? No, no, no. Go out there and see what it's got. Let's, go. Let's get these boys fired up. Let's get you guys in suits and helmets and right. run them. All right, well, now we have an absolute masterpiece brought by uh, somebody that you may recognize if you've watched a bunch of this first stats or any other Hoonigan content, but I'm gonna let you introduce yourself to the people and tell us what you've brought. My name is Eric Connor. I'm from San Diego, California, right, right down the street, and I brought a 1974 F100 Tundra. First off, dude, uh, the fabrication on this thing is uh, immaculate and really sick. But your engine is basically behind the firewall. The real reason for that is you gotta get the weight off the nose, right? Yep. And this is a true center mount truck. So if the motor is where it was, stock frame rail would be right in the way, you wouldn't be able to center mount it. So center mounting it so you get the 24 inches of travel, yep. but you're also pushing more weight back so you can get that good pop and lightweight in the front. Okay, so what is this thing powered by? 454 LSX, but we built it. So okay. it's got custom piston, custom rods. So what is the cubic inch displacement? 461-ish right there, something like that. Okay, just over 460. And then what is power output? And if you know it by the crank or wheel or both, let us know that. So it's a crank 750-ish, maybe a little more. Okay. And wheel horsepower on these big 40-inch tires, it was 535 horsepower. Nice. So it's a center mount, they call it a J-arm. So the A-arm looks like a J, you know, it gets out of the way of your big shocks, coilovers, uh, big bypass shocks. And then what kind of travel are you getting? Uh, 20 or four inches of travel in the front. Okay, and then the rear, what do you? Uh, I strapped it about 30 inches. Okay, but what could it, if you didn't have it strapped? Like 34 inches. Nice, it's a lot. We gotta talk about wheels and tires because uh, you know, you're riding on spicy stuff. Spice. Actually, we run the same wheels. Same wheels, same, yeah, yeah stuff. So these are the KMC forged trophy truck wheels. They run a big, big 5.8 studs. Uh, their own bolt pattern, only trophy trucks run. Tires are a true racing wheel for a, you know, a 40 inch by 12 and a half inch wide trophy truck tire. So, you know, all the guys from like BJ Baldwin to the Menzi, everyone runs this tire if they're on the, you know, the BFG style. 
a lot of stuff going on. A lot back here. What back what here. all is back here, even behind the uh, spare wheels and tires? Oh, uh, you got your reverse lights, uh, chase lights, and you're in the dust so they can see you. You got your quick fill, so when you're racing, you can quick, you know, shoot it in, or you can just open up, go to the gas tank, and fill it up with normal gas pump. What kind of fuel do you run on? Uh, so I was running race, but now I'm just running 91. I wanted to keep it on 91. Nice. Uh, you got your big, your quick release jack. You can just pop a pin, pull your jack up, change a tire real fast. This is new new feature so when you if we do race the truck you get nerfed you get hit in the back they try to push you out of the way if you're going too slow but that ain't going to happen with me fuel cell let's talk about that how big yeah. is this thing uh 77 gallons so it's a big boy rot, rot. Would this be considered a luxury pre-runner uh, i would call it a luxury pre-runner likes to party dude the cage work Sick. Did, so did Morgan do this whole thing? He did the whole thing. Oh wow. The welds are phenomenal. The tidiness of the cage, it's so tight on every single seam, you know? And then these these bars here in the middle are pretty crazy looking, because yeah. what like I've never seen that. Like they're like you know. That's a Morgan Clark signature bar. Okay. It's like an aircraft style. Keeps you the good vision and the same strength. Walk me through the uh Okay, so Holly runs the the, the motor. You got your uh, your iPad. We run all our navigation through there for mm -hmm. a backup nav. And then you got your Lawrence traditional nav. Okay. Um, on these trucks, we run a manual valve body. So there's no clutch. We just put it into each gear. If it doesn't shift, we have to put it in each gear. Yep. It's a 4080, so I do have that fourth gear, nice. you know, so basically go on the freeway gear if I want to. You got all your interior lights, your, you know, your headsets or helmet, whatever you want to run. And a nice feature is these these um, you know braces so you can actually put your foot down and hold yourself in the seat. Everybody has their own brace. And I even have a brace so I can brace myself going over jumps on the side. Ah, so yeah. you, you brace up for oh shit moments. Yes, it, that's what it is. Oh shit. I know that you like to send it, so yeah. we're gonna see you send it. Well, I, don't I hope see. you guys are ready. Two Chevys and Ford bodies. Parson for the win. Oh baby, this is a game of A-arms versus I-beams, but I think Miss Vivian was made for this. I'm Darren Parsons. That's my boy, I'm not gonna bet against him. I'm not stupid. All right, here's the thing, man. Darren's the homie, but Den sides are the truth. Whoop scissors, Darren Parsons. Sorry, Eric, I still love you. Eric's truck is super sick, and he's a psychopath. Darren Parsons has something to prove, and he built this track, and he is a greater psychopath. So I'm gonna go with Darren. Yeah. And Vivian, I think, got him by maybe, maybe a truck. A truck. Maybe, maybe a truck. Maybe a truck. That, that was a tidy race. Yeah. I thought there would be a lot more red mist going. Race one. Race one. Race, race one. True. I think uh, Darren got him out of the I hole. Think Aaron's le Eric's leaving. But He's just driving up the mountain. <sighs> Well done. Dude, one car length, brother. We're gonna talk to Darren and see if there's any negotiation that needs to go down. See I think it's just another heads up. Yeah, this thing. Yeah. Can you leave some for us? <laughs> you turning up fuel pressure or what? No, no, dude, this thing is uh, having an ignition cut and I watched my RPM gauge this time and my RPM gauge went to zero and it was ignition cutting. So I'm thinking that there's something going on with my crank sensor. That's the only thing that sends RPM signal to the computer. I All got right. the box of tools. I'll be back in a jiffy. But we honestly thought you were doing the old drag racer. We thought, we you, thought you were sandbagging. What are you talking about? We yeah. thought you were trying to make Pops proud. Thank you for being my dad.
don't like it. That's usually an RB problem, not an LS, right? That's y'all RB. The problem is it's not the LS, it's electricity. Oh, okay. It's our mortal enemy. There's definitely gonna be a bonus round. I know Darren ain't giving up that easy. All right, so Eric pretty much got a buy on that got one. Got a buy on that one. You, not, not the way you want to win, but know, it's he, still he was, a win. He had me out of the hole. Would have been a like photo finish level race, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. He's got me out of the hole because the damn guy jumps every time. <laughs> <laughs> His dad's a drag racer. He was born to do that. I think him and Michael Cox are in cahoots. It moves the dark hand signal and wide open throttle. That's weird. Did I tell you that? All right, we got a little bonus round, grudge match. Darren thinks he got his truck fixed. No one ever wants to take a win on a mechanical failure. Technically by the rules, Eric won, but. Darren ain't going in out like that. But bonus to the chin fair and square that time. Yeah. Eric was ready this time. And I think he figured you out. Cause I think when you went to jump, he jumped. I, yeah, I was and like, you got an I equal raced, start and you I, lost your advantage. I, I know, I raced him straight up that time and I, <laughs> I thought I had it cause I'd been playing it a little bit the whole time and uh, I got played out. So it's part of it, you play the game. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Hey, but we're glad you got the truck back. Hey home, dude, yeah, that's the good uh, news. I, I do like this, there we go. <laughs> good news is, yeah, the truck's running great. What was it? You know, it had to be the tension on the crank sensor. The wires weren't happy. Um, it got hot and it just created a little resistance and this thing was tripping out, which as rightfully it should, so. There he is. Damn, you're already out of this. That, that truck buggies. Hell yeah, it does. Yeah. He's got 75 horsepower on me right out the gate and that definitely showed on that one. You got that good jump and yeah. that was it, man. And he had the smoother lane. <laughs> oh, man, there you have it. I think we need a rematch in the future. Let's go. Oh, he's coming in hot! Well, it looks like Super did Super things. Yeah. The secret to skating across the top of whoops. Picking them up and dropping them on the 